Now, like what I've said kanina, a certain argument can have two or more premises. So, when there are many premises, several rules of inference are often needed to show that an argument is valid. So, this is illustrated by the following examples where the steps of the arguments are displayed on separate lines with the reason of each step explicitly stated. So, these examples also show how arguments in English can be analyzed using rules of inference. Okay, so here in our first example, let's show that the premises below lead to the conclusion we will be home by sunset. So, first thing that we're going to do is we have to represent each premises with propositional variables. So, as you can see here, we have one, two, three, four premises, and I have already assigned propositional variables. So, we have proposition P, Q, R, S, and D. Next, when, next, when writing your solution, your answers should be divided into two columns. So, we have the steps column and the reason column. Dito sa steps column, dyan yung isusulat yung mga different compound preposition that you have came up from the given premises and from the simplification using um, rules of inference. And dito naman sa reason, you can actually write either premise yan siya or any rule of inference that you have used. Now, um, after ma-represent natin ang mga premises with propositional variables, we are going to write each of the premises into the steps. So, let's start with premise number one. So, this is not P and Q. Okay. So, as you can see, I have written here not P and Q. And ang reason niya is that is a premise. Now, I have to check first if can I simplify this first premise using any rules of inference. So, we have not P and Q. So, let's go back to our rule of inference. So, if you're going to check the list of rules of inference, you can actually simplify premise number 1, not P and Q, using the um, simplification rule, which is, oh no, 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 no. Oh yeah, you can use the simplification rule. So, from not P and Q, magiging not P na lang siya. Okay, so, in writing the next step that you came up from the uh, preceding uh, premise, as you can see, um, I have written here not P kasi yan yung resulta after simplifying not P and Q using simplification, right? So, nandyan siya sa number 2 or step number 2. And as you can see, dito sa reason natin, I have written here number 1 kasi this is step number 2 or premise number 2 or di kaya ang not P, it came from step number 1. And after that, the I have written here the simplification rule. This is the rule that I have used in simplifying not P and Q. Okay. Now, let's proceed into the next premise which is the R implication P. Okay. And I have written premise as the reason. Now, I am going to simplify itong step number 3, which is R implication P. So, let me ask first, can I simplify this alone? So, if you're going to check on the um, table of rules of inference, you can simplify step number 3 alone. So, kailangan may partner siya. So, you can actually pair 
um, step number two and three and simplify them together using the modus tollens na rule. And as you can see, nasa step four natin, we have the result not R. From step number two and three using the rule of inference modus tollens. Okay? And then, after that, let's proceed to the next premise, which is not R implication S. So, the reason is premise. Now, I'm going to simplify step 5. Let me ask again. Can I simplify step 5 alone? No, I can't. How about step 5 at saka yung pinaka-recent na uh, result natin, which is ang step number 4. So, that is not R. Okay, I think I can use here the modus ponens rule of inference, which resulted with um, propositional variable S from step number 4 and 5 using the modus to, uh, sorry, modus ponens. Okay, let's proceed to the last premise. Let's write it down dito sa steps natin. So, we have S implication T. Okay, so I have write the reason here as premise. So, um, just a reminder lang ha that our conclusion should be we will be home by sunset. And that is represented by proposition T. So, dapat yung last step natin should be propositional variable T. Okay, so now let's um, simplify the recent step, which is ang step number 7, S implication T. So let me ask again, can I simplify it alone? No, you can't. How about let's simplify both the recent um, step and the current step, which is yung step number 6 at saka step number 7. We can actually use the rule modus ponens here. So as you can see, if we're going to use the modus ponens rule, we will came up with the result uh, propositional variable t from the steps 6 and 7 using the modus ponens rule. And with this, we have came up with the conclusion propositional variable t represented by we will be home by sunset. So that's how you show the validity of an argument using A or using the rule of inference. Now, let's have another example. Okay. So, let's show that the premises below, so we have three premises, lead to the conclusion, um, if I did not finish writing the program, then I will be or I will keep up feeling refreshed. So this is represented by the compound preposition not Q implication S. Okay, let me write it down. So this is represented by not Q implication S. So our conclusion should be in this form of compound preposition not Q implication S. Okay. So, like what I've said, if you're given with a certain number of premises, first thing that you're going to do, you have to represent each premises with propositional variables. So, yeah, naka-represent na siya. We have PQRS. So, we have one, two, three, four propositional variable here. And you have to remember that um, if a certain propositional variable, or sorry, if a certain premise is my word na not, so, you have to negate it. As you can see here, uh, propositional P denotes you send me an email message. Diyan sa first premise natin. And going to the second premise, meron dito, you do not send me an email message. So, that is still propositional P. However, nakanegate lang siya. Kasi may word na not. Therefore, it is not P. Okay? So, you have to remember that. Kasi baka i-represent nyo siya with different propositional variable. However, meron lang silang same value, same meaning. Okay? 
And then, after na represent natin ng mga prepositional variable, remember ha, that in writing your answer, your answer should be divided into two columns. We have the steps and the reason. Now, after that, let's start with the first premise. So, the first premise, isulat natin siya sa step 1, or step number 1, yeah? So, this will be P implication Q. And then, yung reason is premise. Now, let's try to simplify ang P implication Q. Okay, so, I think hindi natin siya masisimplify, right? Now, dito na papasok yung idadagdag ko na rule of inference, which is yung contra positive. Um, it is not included in the table, but kindly write it down na lang. So, yung contra positive is like this. P implication Q, magiging ganito yan ang form niya. Ibaliktad lang natin siya, so that's not Q implication not P. So, um, what do you call this? I, I think it's kung sa Boolean identities pa, this is commutative pa or associative? I don't know, nakalimutan ko. Yeah, I think it's associative ata, right? I don't know. So, it's either of the two. So, ibaliktad siya and then inegate ang each of the proposition. So, this is contrapositive. Okay, so we're going to use contrapositive here. So, from P implication Q, so the result will be not Q implication not P from step number 1 using the contrapositive rule of inference. And after that, let's proceed to the next premise, which is not P implication R. And then yung reason is premise. Now, let's try to... Simplify uh, step number three alone. So, yes, we can also use contrapositive, right? However, much better or much, yeah, much better solution or much better next step ang simplification of step number three at saka step number two. Because if you're going to observe, we're targeting kasi not Q at saka S. So, makikita natin dito na nasa step 2 yung not Q. So, we have to get that. Right? Kasi if we're going to use contrapositive here, magiging uh, not R and not not P. So, double negation na siya. Uh, we, don't have a no, we, we, we don't have a double negation in the um, rules of inference. So, that's not valid. Okay? So, basically, I conclude that we cannot use contrapositive in the next step. So, best next step is simplifying step number 3 with step number 2. So, what rule of inference can we use here? So, we can use here the, um, what, do you, what do you call that, um, hypothetical syllogism. So, if we're going to use hypothetical syllogism, magiging not Q implication R na siya. From step number 2 and 3 using the, uh, the indicated rule. Okay. Next, let's use the last premise, which is R implication S. So, here we can still use actually the contrapositive. But again, we're targeting the not Q. So, nasa step 4 siya. So, kukunin natin yun. Okay, hindi natin dapat pahabain yung step. Okay? So, the shorter the step, the better. Okay? Um, so, yeah, we have to get not Q from step number 4. So, as you can see, which rule kaya yung gagamitin natin dito? Kindly guess. So, if you want to guess, just post the video. Okay, so I think the rule that we can use here to simplify step 5 and 4 is the hypothetical syllogism pa rin. So, we get now the expected or the targeted conclusion which is not Q implication S. Uh, by using the step 4 and 5 and the rule of inference, hypothetical syllogism. So, yeah, that's how we um, construct the validity of an argument using the rules of inference.